Want to learn Korean? Come visit TalkToMeInKorean.com to find the best Korean lessons for you. So this video is going to be a little bit different from the usual Korean Q&A videos here on Talk To Me In Korean where I introduce certain grammar points or introduce how to say certain things in Korean because it's going to be about the eating culture here in Korea. So let's go! 안녕하세요 여러분 선현우입니다. Hi, I'm Hyunwoo from TalkToMeInKorean.com And by the way, if I just said 안녕하세요 여러분 a little too quickly just now, it's 안녕하세요 여러분 Hello everyone, hello guys. <laughs> okay, so 안녕하세요 여러분 안녕하세요 여러분 다시 인사드립니다. Hello again. So today we're going to be talking about some interesting um, aspects of the eating culture here in Korea. I've written down some points here so that I don't forget anything. If I fail to mention anything that you wanted to know about, any aspect, any specific aspect, please let me know in the comments and I will maybe make part two uh, for this video, for this topic. So, um, you already know that uh, it's common in many countries, including Korea, many Asian countries usually, it is uh, common to see people asking each other, have you eaten? Like there are many different expressions that you might have encountered. 밥 먹었어? In casual language or 식사하셨어요? In formal language. 점심 드셨어요? Uh, have you had lunch? also in formal language. So you already probably know that it's just a greeting, uh, like the English meaningless hello or how are you? I mean, hello is not meaningless, but how are you is not really that meaningful in most cases, right? Like, do you really care whether this person or how this person is that day? It's just a greeting. You see this person, you are acknowledging their existence, you want to say something, but you don't want to you don't have anything more specific to say, so you say, hey, how are you? And then you pass by without really answering that question. It's the same uh, with the have you eaten question in Korea and in other countries. I I've looked up um, the same question and of course there are many other countries that are mentioned after this question. Why do people ask me have I eaten um, in China, in Hong Kong? So many Asian countries are mentioned and the, some of the answers actually talk about the fact that back in the day everybody was poor, having enough to eat was not guaranteed, but I don't think it's the case anymore, especially here in Korea. Um, people don't even, not even in the darkest corner of their mind, like not even in the back alley of their mind, do they ever think about the fact that people might be, you know, having trouble eating. It's not that, it's just a greeting that has been fixed as an expression. So why do I talk about this? Um, and especially with culture videos, culture topics like this one, there are no right or wrong answers. But the purpose of this video is so that you know what's going on inside people's uh, heads when you're talking to Korean people or, or interacting with Korean people, scheduling for something, an event or something with Koreans, okay? so. Um, eating is a big deal, not because Korean foods, or Korean dishes are awesome, even though they are. Um, it's because it's just a big part of the culture when it comes to eating together versus eating alone. So let's talk about eating alone first. So it's becoming more and more common to uh, see people eating alone in restaurants. Many more and more restaurants actually encourage people to eat alone because they are, you know, customers and they have adjusted to the new trend, food becoming westernized and people becoming more individualistic. Speaking of which, uh, my personal observation is that the more individualistic a society is, the less people care about whether this person has eaten or not. Would you agree with that? Um, let me know in the comments and... So, uh, back to the main topic, eating alone. Uh, although it's becoming more common, people still feel not as comfortable eating alone in a restaurant as they would eating in a group and having someone, letting someone see themselves eating, typically, um, I guess, Korean dishes in general. If you are drinking a cup of coffee, a glass of small glass of espresso in a Starbucks or having a hamburger in Burger King, it doesn't feel the same, but if you're eating a kimchi stew or kimbap or a bowl of ramen noodles, 
in a restaurant and your friend sees you, you feel a little bit uncomfortable and you kind of you, you don't really enjoy the fact that they saw you eating alone. Maybe because you might feel like you you might look like you don't have any friends or you might look like you're not popular. I don't know the all the individual uh, different motivations uh, behind that, but it is a fact, I can safely say that it is a fact that most people wouldn't feel as comfortable eating alone as they would eating in a group. So my personal explanation for that is, or um, just talking about myself at least, unless you're doing mukbang, you know, because you want to, mukbang is an eating show where you eat a lot uh, and talk about the food or other topics. Unless you're doing that, you don't want other people to look at you eat, watch you eat, especially Korean food. So th this, this kind of feeling, this kind of attitude is usually associated with Korean, like traditional, typical Korean foods, Korean dishes, and not so much with Western, like new dishes. You know, how about a taco? How about a burrito? How about hot dog? The, the connection is a little more vague. So that's that people are not as comfortable eating alone. And therefore, it, is, it was very common for me and my friends in college, uh, when I was in college, to actively look for people to eat with. So your class finishes at 1.30, you're hungry, and uh, you go to the lounge area, where, wherever your friends are hanging out, or you can text people. Has anybody um, like not eaten? Does anybody want to go to the school cafeteria that's right there, like 15 meters away with me because I don't feel comfortable eating alone. I don't want my friends to think that I don't have anybody to eat with. So that was a very, very common practice. And I, I think it's still quite common, maybe not as common as before. It's quite common. So that's that. And the fact that people feel more comfortable eating with a group of people might come from the fact that people have always eaten in large groups like large families and classmates eating together or company employees in one department eating together. So you will often see if you go to large uh, districts with all these tall office buildings, you know, with more than 50 floors in one building, you will see at 11.40 or 11.45-ish, um, people all kind of go leaving the building in swarms, in large groups, and they're all walking toward the area where many restaurants are found, and they all eat together. You don't see many people eating at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., although there are people who do. Um, it's usually at like between 11.50, like 1 p.m., when they all eat together. And how do you say no to the group lunch, lunch offer when you will bump into each other like right around the corner? Of course, it really depends on the organization. At Talk To Me In Korean, we have flexible working hours. We don't come in at 9 a.m. when we all leave at like 6 p.m. We don't do that. For example, uh, Kyunghwa comes in at 1 p.m. every day and Seokjin usually comes in at 9.30 a.m. and Kyunghwa comes in at like anywhere between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. So we don't, we don't care uh, what time somebody comes in. We usually have lunch together, but if somebody doesn't want to have lunch, for example, Juyeon, she usually likes to just get more work done, just take care of lunch. She doesn't care about food. so. Yeah, so as long as she's not hungry, she can work happily, uh, I hope. <laughs> so in small teams like this, this doesn't apply, but in large groups, everybody kind of eats together, okay? So the group culture thing, I just mentioned it, and also the fact that eating alone doesn't feel as comfortable. So there's another aspect um, that's kind of in the back of people's minds. So uh, when I was a kid, my mother and my grandmother often would tell me, oh, it's okay to go to your friend's house and play, but make sure you come back before dinner time. It was not because it would be a waste if she couldn't feed me the wonderful dish that she cooked for me. It was, I think, more because she didn't want me to be kind of a burden, unwanted guest at my friend's house. Because when you are staying, for example, you visit a friend's house at 3 p.m. and you are, you, you know, you don't show any signs of wanting to leave by 6 p.m. The family members of your friend 
start wondering, oh, should we also invite him to dinner? Should we, you know, eat dinner with him or without him? So since it's a group thing, it's not like, oh, we're gonna eat, okay? You do whatever you want to do with uh, my son, um, play video games, whatever. We will eat, okay? They don't do that. It's just everybody in the same room, in the same, you know, vicinity, all eating together. So people always have to calculate, oh, is, is they, are they going to stay for dinner or not? Um, a few days ago, many, uh, many of my friends actually came over to my place and my mom was visiting and they left at 7.30 p.m., I think. And the international-minded Hyunwoo inside me didn't really mind. Like I didn't even uh, notice the time, the fact that it was past the usual dinner time. But my mom was like, Oh, I was so uncomfortable uh, when they were around. They're nice people, but uh, you should have let me know that they were not going to eat here with us. Or if they were going to eat with uh, us, you should have let me know before dinner time so I could have prepared accordingly. So yeah, so that, there's that. Okay, one last thing. Before I talk about this last thing, uh, a reminder. The purpose of this video is not to tell you some rules, some manners and etiquettes of the Korean eating culture. It's not the purpose. It's just to give you some maybe refreshing views, perspectives on this topic. People, it's, it's a bigger deal than you think it might be, like eating together, like deciding whether you will eat together or not, you know, things like that. So that's why like organizing events around dinner time it's more it can be trickier so uh, that's why also uh, when i go to lectures events around 7 30 p.m they the event organizers they always ask me will you have eaten uh, if you won't can we prepare something for you uh, if it's a more international event i feel like people really don't really ask me whether i will have eaten or not um, I don't think it's wrong or right. It's just different. And the last thing that I wanted to mention, so I, I think I have two sides of me, uh, the Korean to the core side of Hyunwoo and more internationally thinking side of Hyunwoo. And when I go to international gatherings, meetups, uh, people from various countries, uh, more Western countries maybe, even if it's a dinner gathering, the food doesn't feel like it's the main character of the gathering. It's the people, I guess. I mean, of course, it's always people. People are more important than food, but people don't dig in right away. Like they meet at 7 p.m., they start eating, and then they finish all the food that's there on the table. And then at 7.30 p.m., they have desserts and they talk about other things. Finally, once the food is gone, it's not it's usually not like that in international gatherings. It's the food is consumed more over a longer period of time. It's not a big deal if the dishes are served one after another, more like a course meal. Whereas on Korean dinner occasions, when you go to a, a friend's house, you're invited to a dinner. You, the moment you arrive at the friend's place, you, you can expect the dishes to be just there on the table and you eat right away, you wash your hands quickly and then you eat. And the eating portion of the evening all happens and ends kind of toward the beginning of your evening together. Do you, do you know what I mean? So the food has to be consumed really fast, not fast, but like first, and then maybe they will have some drinks, maybe they will have some fruits and they will talk over tea or some other kinds of beverages. So I feel like since it's a group eating thing, hey everybody let's eat. This is the eating session. Let's let it begin and then then kind of talk separately. Of course all the conversations will happen at the same time but I feel like there's this kind of difference. The density is a little bit different. So I think I will wrap up this video here. I've tried to give you some specific examples, but if there are, like I said earlier, if there are things that you've been wondering about and you didn't really get an answer from um, this video, please let me know in the comments and I will try to answer your questions. And thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn more Korean, this was not a Korean language lesson, but if you want to learn more Korean, please visit our website, talktomeinkorean.com and also check out our books and eBooks. Well, I will see you next time. 다음 시간에 봬요. Bye.